Hey everyone, Cass here, fellow sickle cell warrior, and I'm here to talk to you about treatment options. What preventative and disease modifying treatment options are available for sickle cell disease? Let's take a dive into what treatment options may be available to you to slow the progression of sickle cell disease. First is hydroxyurea. Hydroxyurea became the first drug therapy approved by the US FDA for sickle cell disease back in 1998. Hydroxyurea is the drug therapy that has been studied the longest. We're talking decades of research in people living with sickle cell disease. Hydroxyurea is a daily medicine taken by mouth that works by increasing fetal hemoglobin. This is the type of hemoglobin that transports oxygen better and can prevent sickling from happening. While some side effects include hair loss, Nail discoloration, always got my nails did. And lowered sperm count, Hydro hydroxyurea has been proven to decrease mortality in sickle cell disease and provides protection against organ damage. We gotta protect our organs, y'all. Hydroxyurea is available for both adults and children with sickle cell disease of all types. All right, so the second one we got is L-glutamine, brand name Indari. So almost 20 years after hydroxyurea, L-glutamine was approved as a drug therapy for sickle cell disease back in 2017 by the US FDA. L-glutamine is naturally found within the body and taking L-glutamine can reduce the acute complications. This is pain crisis and hospitalizations due to sickle cell disease in adults and children five years of age and older. L-glutamine comes in those little packets of powders and can be mixed in with food, drinks. You can mix it in whatever you want. A lot of people I know add it to their smoothies. Yum. Now after L-glutamine came crizalizumab. Let's say that one more time. Crizalizumab. The brand name is Adocvio, and it was the third drug therapy approved by the US FDA in 2019 for sickle cell disease. It works by making your blood vessels and certain blood cells less sticky. Unlike the first three therapies, crizalizumab is a monthly infusion, so you have to visit your local clinic to have it administered. Now, crizalizumab is for people with sickle cell disease that are 16 years or older, and it aims to reduce how often certain episodes crisis happen. Last but not least is Voxelator. It is the fourth US FDA approved drug for sickle cell disease, and it was approved within days of crizalizumab. The FDA was busy in 2019 approving those sickle cell drug therapies. I mean, come on. Voxelator brand name Oxprida is a daily tablet that works to prevent sickling and hemolysis, you know, that breakdown of the red blood cells. Voxelator is approved for use for adults and children that are 12 years of age and older. Now, did you catch that I said US FDA approved these therapies? It's worth noting that not all of these drug therapies are available everywhere, especially the newer ones. It's possible that the companies behind these therapies are working hard with entities that regulate therapies within your country or your region to get them approved for people living with sickle cell disease in that area. Always ask your doctor or healthcare provider to provide updates on newly approved therapies in sickle cell and if it's available for use within your location. Now, we've talked about drug therapies, but there's another treatment option available. That's blood transfusions. Many people either get simple blood transfusions, that's getting healthy blood in, or exchange blood tra transfusions, that's getting healthy blood in while taking affected or sickle blood out. And based on your care plan, people do this on a consistent basis, like monthly. Transfusions help dilute the sickle blood, allowing your body to use healthy donor blood for its function. It's important to remember if you're getting transfused to track your iron levels, very important because if they get too high, it can be life-threatening. Okay, you still with me? I know we're going through a lot. So folic acid and antibiotics like penicillin are used to help prevent issues associated with sickle cell disease, especially in kids with sickle cell disease. Remember taking antibiotics? Folic acid helps make new red blood cells, which typically last only 10 to 20 days in sickle cell instead of that 120 days for typical red blood cells. Because sickle cell can affect the immune system, some individuals living with sickle cell may lose functionality of their spleen, which helps prevent infections. This is the reason for the need to take antibiotics 
antibiotics like penicillin to help fight off those infections and other associated complications. Okay, I'm gonna slide in one more treatment option in, and I know this one's gonna be controversial, but vaccinations. Again, depending on where you live, there are vaccinations against pneumonia, something we see often in sickle cell, or the flu, something that can set off our sickle cell. These are added protective measures. That's all I'll say about that. <sighs> that was a lot. So if you're interested in any of these treatment options and they're available to you, the next step is to have a conversation with your doctor. I hope this helps.